Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another online service with Foundry Church. We miss you guys. We hope you're doing well. Um, please, if you, are, if you are in need or if you have some prayer requests or you need some supplies or, 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 or some help with anything, um, give us a phone call. Shoot us an email. Um, we want to help. We want to be a part of what's going on in your life. Um, and we definitely want to be able to pray for you. Um, so uh, speaking of prayer, let's start this morning with some guided prayer. I'll put some, uh, a scripture passage on the screen, and I ask you to join with me in meditating on the words and praying through them and asking God to apply them to our hearts. Let's read together. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Let's spend a minute now in silent prayer, right there in your living room, on your couch. Set your hearts before God. Ask for his peace. Ask for his comfort and his confidence in the Father's plan. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we have security in you, that we can count on you, on the fact that you are coming back for us, that you have a place for us, and Lord, that our hearts don't have to be troubled, and we need not fear for you. We have your peace. We have in you something that is greater than anything else in the world. The world can't offer us joy, true joy. The world can't offer us real security, the world can't offer us real love. Only you can. So, Lord, we rest in that. Jesus, we cling to that. Thank you, our God, our Savior, and our friend. In your name, amen. Jesus, my Redeemer, there is no 
everybody today as much as we can see you. Um, it is I think week number five of our new normal and uh, once again standing here in an empty auditorium um, but I know that we're all joined together and enjoying this time together of worshiping our God and, and uh, looking into the scriptures and seeing what God has for us. So uh, let's do that again. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. God we just uh, come before you today and are, are grateful for um, your provision, God. We're thankful that um, that even in, in a time of unusual um, uh, activity where we're not sure uh, what's happening and, and things are a little open-ended, God, that, that we know that you're still sure, you're still our foundation, and God, we can trust you. And so, Lord, this morning as we open your word, we ask that you'd bless us exactly where we're at, that you would help us uh, with... Um, uh, what we need help with, and God, that you would teach us through your, uh, through your scripture, God. Thank you for giving it to us. Thank you for your son. And God, just ask that you would um, uh, just uh, help us as we um, go through this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, we are backing up a little bit from last week. Last week, we were in, uh, the, the, our, excuse me, not in, but at the crucifixion, of course, and the, the resurrection talking on Good Friday and then also on Easter. And, uh, but now we're backing up a little bit. We're going back to John chapter number 13. We've been in John chapter 12 for quite a while uh, as a result of, uh, of the coronavirus and everything else. And now we're finally moving on to John chapter 13, which I think this portion of Scripture is one of the more amazing portions of Scripture that we have because it's um, such a keen insight into... 
Jesus and his disciples and, and, and the, the intimacy and the, the honesty and, and the, the raw teaching that Jesus gave to, to those that followed him the closest. And, and just how he, he left them as he, he knew he was going to the cross in, 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 a, in another day. This was the last day that he was going to be with his disciples and he wanted to teach them some very key truths about who he is and, and about how we're to act and what we're to do and how we're to treat each other in light of the fact that we're Christ followers. And so um, I think this is going to be a, a, a very um, interesting study as we dive into this and something that can help us out a lot as not only to what to do, but the motivations behind it and, um, and, and, and why Jesus did the things that he did. And and so let's take a look. We're in John chapter 13 and verse number one. And it says this. It was just before the Passover festival. So we know the setting. Um, Jesus has come into town, uh, into, into the city of Jerusalem. And he's been welcomed with the palm trees and uh, the cloaks. And the whole city comes out shouting, Hosanna. Um, you know, he's our king. And, and now he goes and it's time for the Passover um, they get the upper room, they go and they, they find uh, th- this, this room that Jesus tells them and, and, and they go and they prepare it and they're all gathered together in, in the upper room now at this particular point in time, Jesus and his disciples. And so it's just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And it's just, uh, it's such a raw passage. It's just such a, 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 a huge climactic moment here that John actually experienced as he's, he's writing this. And, and to think about Jesus and, and everything he was going through and, and all the, the weight, uh, literally the weight of the world and the weight of all of us and, 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 and all of that. And just to think about all of that and to think about um, all of that pressure and all that heaviness and yet his disciples were loved by him completely and thoroughly and all the way to the end. I know that in my life when things get heavy, when stress happens, when um, things are extremely difficult, that sometimes it, is, it becomes very hard to um, focus on anything other than myself. You know, it, it becomes very difficult to get out of that own, your own way when those things happen. And yet here's Jesus with all this weight and all this pressure and all this stress and, and, and knowing exactly what's coming. Um, yet it says that he loved them to the end. We have a Savior that, that loves us so much. And regardless of the circumstances that are going on in the world, he's there. And he loves us all the way through all the way through this life and, and all the way into eternity, that we're loved and we're loved thoroughly, we're loved completely, and we're loved unconditionally. And that's important. There's nothing worse in this world than being loved conditionally, having to meet certain things and criteria in order for someone to show us affection. I mean, that's, that's, that's the worst thing you can do to somebody. And Jesus doesn't do that to us. He set us free with his love. And I think we'll see that in just a minute. So it goes on to say in verse number two, the evening meal was in progress. So they're, they're eating, they're, they're eating the Passover meal there. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And we all know that story um, where uh, Judas gets uh, upset with everything uh, as far as the, the attitude. And, and I think the final straw was, was uh, Mary anointing Jesus with the expensive spikenard uh, perfume. Um, and he decides he's had enough, and with the devil's help, he goes and, and uh, for 30 pieces of silver, uh, a meager amount uh, of money, he goes and, and betrays Jesus and, and, and sets Jesus up to be crucified, and, and it says it's already, this has already happened. And um, verse number three, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. Now, this is key. This is super important to what happens here. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he knows exactly who he is, what he's doing, where he's going. You know, we know that Jesus is 100% God, yet he's 100% man. 
So we have a situation here where Jesus knows exactly who he is. He doesn't have an identity crisis. He doesn't, he, he trusts in the Father. He doesn't wonder about those things. He knows, it says, uh, again, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. He knows exactly who he is, what he is, what he's doing. And it says, and that he had come from God. He knew who, exactly who he was, why he was there. And he was returning to God. He knew exactly where he was going. There was no doubt about it. Jesus knew exactly who he was. There's no identity crisis there. And, and look what he does. It says, after that, so, uh, excuse me, uh, verse number three, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now, this was a servant's task. This was as menial a task as you could have. So if you can project yourself back, which is impossible to do, but if you can just think back, maybe some of you know what dusty roads are all about and, 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 and walking in, in, in dust and things. And, and that's what everything was like at this point in time. And as people walked, their feet got dirty from just walking through the world, walking in their regular routes, doing everything that they normally do. Their feet got dusty and dirty and they would, the people that could afford it had a servant that their job was when people came in from the outside, they would sit them down and wash the feet of the people that would come in and wash the dirt off of them and the dust off of them so they could relax and enjoy uh, the, the being in the house together. And it was, it was as low as you could get. And yet here's Jesus doing this for his disciples. He calmly gets up, takes off his outer robe, wraps a towel around his waist and goes and sits down and starts, pours water into a basin and starts washing his disciples' feet. This is not just the teacher, not just the master, not just the rabbi. This is the creator of everything that we know. The, the, the king of our of all kings, the Lord of all lords. And yet Jesus, because he knew exactly who he was, was able to sit down and calmly wash his disciples' feet. Now, why wash feet and should we do that now? That's always an interesting question. Um, I was actually a part of a church for a little while where foot washing was actually, um, along with baptism and the Lord's Supper, the third ordinance. And I never, I wasn't there long enough to do it. Um, and I'm glad. I just, I, I would, that's, that sounds like a terrible, terrible thing to me. I, 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 I can't imagine um, that scenario uh, under any circumstances, uh, personally. Now, uh, so if, and we don't do that here at Foundry, where we actually have a ceremony where we wash each other's feet. Um, but I believe it's symbolic for something greater. I think it's symbolic for something that we can do for each other. And if you think about what Jesus was doing, he, he, when you wash somebody's feet, they were walking around in the world. They were walking around and, and, and they, they picked up the, the dirt from the outside. And when they came into the house, the place of, to, to, to be able to kick back and, and, and relax and, and get reset and rest and enjoy company and, and do all of those things, that's when the servant would come in and wash the feet. And that's what Jesus did for them. And later on, he's going to say, you do that for each other. And so what would allow Jesus to do this? And then what would allow us to do the same thing? You know, it's interesting that Jesus knew exactly where he came from. He knew what his purpose was and he knew where he was going. And if you know those things, those are the great questions that people have wondered about for, for time and eternity. Since time has been here, people have wondered why we're here, what, what, where we came from, where we're going. If we really believe what the Bible says, and if we really believe what we teach, then we believe we know the answer to that. In, in, in maybe, maybe kind of vague terms, but we know the answer to that. 
We knew we come from God. We know we have a purpose to be here, which is to love God and to love each other. And we know where we're going. We should have no identity crisis within us. You know, the beautiful thing about what Jesus did for us is he actually set us free. And by being set free, it doesn't mean we have to live in a free country or we have to live in a situation where it's, it's the, the government is idealistic. It means no matter where you're at or what you're doing or what your circumstances, that you're free. And what it means by being free is we're free from the, 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 the tyranny of religion. We're free from the tyranny of the trying. We're free from that, that the bondage of, of, of trying to please a, a, a seemingly unpleasable God because of what Jesus did for us and went to the cross and fully reconciled us to the Father. We are loved unconditionally right where we're at. We've been given purpose. We, we, we've given, been given insight into where we came from and we know that wherever we're going, it's going to be with God and it's going to be the new heavens and the new earth. We may be sketchy on the details, but we know exactly where we're going as far as who we're going to be with. And we're going to be loved forever. With that being said, what are the implications of that? Think about it like this. If God had said, you have to do, I love you if you do certain things. I love you if you um, lead a certain amount of people to me in a year. Or I love you if you don't say any cuss words or whatever it happens to be. And we were put in a situation where we were forced to love others to try to get God to love us. That wouldn't be freedom at all. And, and that would cause us to be improperly motivated because everything we would be doing for others, we would really be doing for ourselves because we would be doing it to try to self-preserve. We, we may not want to do it. We may not like doing it, but, but we're going to do it because if we don't do it, we're in trouble. But Jesus didn't do that to us. Jesus gave us a better way and Jesus set us free. And what it means by that is when Jesus set us free uh, from, from all of those things, it allows us to be properly motivated, understanding that we're perfectly taken care of. I don't have to worry about Trevor anymore. I don't have to worry about where I'm going. I don't have to worry about why I'm here. I don't have to worry about where I came from because Jesus let me in on all that and I understand that and I know that I'm loved by him. And if we really do know that, if we really do trust in that, that gives us the ability to be able to truly serve others with a pure heart, loving others just because they exist, because we've been loved the same way by God. We are free to love freely. And we're free to serve one another. We can lay our egos aside. A lot of us have identity issues. We do. We, we, we struggle with uh, being insecure, you know. Um, and I think all of us have insecurities of some, some kind. You know, we, we all struggle with uh, looking at ourselves in a way that, 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 you know, we see the worst and we think the worst and, and it comes out in some ugly ways. But the truth is, you're loved and I'm loved by the God who created everything right where we're at. And he showed us that in Christ. And because of that truth, our identity doesn't have to be in our own accomplishments. Our identity doesn't have to be wrapped up in, in, in the things that our parents told us. It doesn't have to be wrapped up in, the, in, in our insufficiencies and trying to make those better. It doesn't have to be wrapped up in any of that. Our identity is permanently linked and, and given to us by Jesus. We are new creations in Christ. We have been set free. We are, are able to serve one another purely and with pure hearts out of true love because of what Jesus has done for us. And I believe that's what Jesus is showing us right here. He's saying, look, I know exactly who I am. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the king of kings and lord of lords. I know where I'm going. I'm going back to the Father. And because of that, because of, of, of knowing exactly who I am, I'm able to do this. And he took off his outer coat and he washed his disciples' feet. Now we'll get back to the application here in just a few minutes. It says in verse 6, he came to Simon Peter. And again, Peter's Peter, right? He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, 
you will never wash my feet. <laughs> That's Peter, right? I mean, he, uh, I get it. I, I get it. The, the, the idea of Jesus doing this is, is a rough one. You know, it's, it's, it wasn't culturally correct. And, and Peter's calling him out on it. But Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. So he says, just give me a whole bath. Just, just wash me all off then if, if, if it means I can be with you. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. Verse number 12, when he had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes and returned, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. So we have Peter here in this scenario, in this scene. And he says, don't, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus says, you can't have no part of me if I don't. He says, well, wash my whole body. Jesus says, well, those that are clean don't need wash. Just, you, just, you need the, the dirt taken off your feet because you're already clean. Now, this is interesting because we can only do what we can do for each other. You know, there's, there's a work that God does that we can't do. I can't save anybody. I can't make anybody whole. I can't, I'm not the one that gave my life for somebody. Jesus did that. But what I have been commanded by Jesus to do is to love him. This is what we've been commanded to do is to love him and to love each other. And to, 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 the, the, the love part there means to value each other and to, 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 to place each other in higher esteem than ourselves. And because of who we are in Christ, that allows us to, to do life with one another, to help one another, to encourage one another, to serve one another in a real meaningful way. So what do I mean by that? If you think about what this world does to us, we come and we gather of course, we do it in different ways, obviously, but, but we come into church and God places, into the, places us into these church families for a reason, because this is where we act out the truth of, of who we are in Christ. And when we come together and we see each other, we're able to, to, to spiritually wash each other's feet in the sense that we're able to to, as we come in with the cares of the world and the dirt of the world and the heaviness of the world and the stress of what life throws at us, this is a place of respite. This is a place where we are able to get honest with one another, where we're able to find a, a friend, where we're able to find somebody to, that listens to us, that, that puts an arm around us, that loves, well, six feet away now, I guess, but you know what I mean, that, that, that we take care of each other, that we listen to each other, that we give time to each other, that when somebody needs help moving, we move them, that we, um, when somebody needs counsel, we counsel them, when someone needs um, reproved, we reprove them, when someone needs encouraged, we encourage them, and when we do all these things and, and we do life together and we love each other and we serve each other, what we're doing is we're understanding exactly who we are, we're understanding that, that, that our identity is in Christ, not in us. And we don't have to fight for us to be recognized any longer. We don't have to fight for our own name. Jesus has already taken care of that. Now we can humbly serve each other because we are, whether we're poor, we're rich, whether we uh, abound or abase, Paul said, we can, we, we're, we're, we're good. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Why? Because our identity is in him, not in, in this uh, trying to make a name for ourselves and we're able to come into this place and truly love each other and take care of each other and, 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 and pull up beside each other and, and help us be able to rest from the weariness and the stress of the world in a safe place and get reset and enjoy one another and enjoy Jesus together. I really believe that's what washing each other's feet is. It is helping us all come to a place where we get refocused and we're able to rest in Christ together. The world's a heavy place. The world's a dark place. The world will weigh us down. The world will lie to us. But when we come in here together, we're able to get reset. We're able to focus. We're able to help each other. Sometimes it's very personal. Sometimes it's corporately. But we're able to come together and wash each other's feet because we understand exactly who we are in Christ. This goes on to say, 
Do you understand what I have done for you? He said in verse number 12. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now here's the thing. That's our example that Jesus gave us. Is to understanding who we are. Understanding who we are in him. To come together and to love him with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. And to love each other as ourselves. And to come in and serve one another. If we come into a place and we say, hey, look at me, you serve me, you do something for me, I deserve it, I'm the one that deserves this or that, what we're doing is we are saying that we are better than Jesus, that, that we deserve something, that, 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 that recognition that, that Jesus didn't even ask for here. Our attitude should always be when we come to church, when we, when we do life together, when we come into a Christian community, when we go, go out to the world, to our neighbors, to wherever, our attitude should always be, I am saved, I am his, I am loved, I am set free, therefore I can humble myself no matter what the circumstances. And again, I'm not speaking because I do it all the time, or most of the time, but we should because the truth is we're set free in Jesus and we can serve each other and serve each other well, wash one another's feet, spiritually speaking, and take care of each other. He said, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. You know, the greatest, it's so true. There's nothing, there's nothing greater than helping one another. You know, that sometimes when things come up, and I, I know this is true, things come up and you kind of dread them. When you're, when you're helping somebody else, when you're giving your time, when you're giving, and you're kind of like, uh, the, you know, I really don't want to do this, but, and then you go and you do it and you come back and you're so full of life because you're so blessed when you humble yourself. You're so blessed when you, when you go and you help others and you help others see how, how great life really is. It's, it, there's nothing like it. There's nothing more beautiful than God's people serving the community, serving each other and serving our neighbors. There's no greater view and glimpse into the heart of God than that. So as we think about this, as we go through this coronavirus thing, as, as we have neighbors that are in need, as we have people that are in need, as we have um, friends that are in need, let's think about this. This is such a great opportunity to go out and realize who we are in Christ, realize that we've been set free completely and go out and serve each other and serve each other with free hearts knowing that we're taken care of forever. Let's, spiritually speaking, wash each other's feet and take care of one another. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you, um, God, with hopefully humble hearts where we can just be amazed once again at how much you love us and that you love us unconditionally. You haven't put any constraints on it. You love us right where we're at and you, you've, you've given us an identity in you. We are yours. We are in Christ. And so God, armed with that truth, help us. Guide us by your spirit as we go out and help us to to help each other navigate this world and find rest and peace from the weariness of the world, to find safe harbor with each other. Whether we need to get honest about something, whether we need to just cry on each other's shoulders, whether we need to just be honest about needing help in some other area, God, give us the ability to do that and help us to, to wash each other's feet well. And we'll just give you the praise for that, God. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.